Man, do I like this backpack. Hey guys, it's Epic, and I'm here doing a post-trail review of the Z-Pax Arc Hall Ultra. The Z-Pax packs are something that I've been using since 2018. Uh, I got my very first Arc Blast in 2018 when I did the Appalachian Trail. And for the most part, since then, that's what I've been using. I had a brief period where I was using the Dan Durston pack. Did really like that pack. I got that pack after my Arc Blast, my original Arc Blast, finally did have a catastrophic failure, and I wanted to try something different. And that pack was great, but once the Ultra version of the Arc Hall came out and I saw that they made some changes, I really wanted to give this pack a try and I've been pleasantly surprised. So without further ado, let's get into the company specs. This pack with zero accessories weighs 19.6 ounces and is made from Black Ultra 200, UHMWPE, which stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. The maximum recommended load for this pack is 40 pounds. This pack features a roll top closure, side pockets that will hold a 1 to 1.5 liter hard water bottle or a 2 liter soft water bottle. The front mesh pocket is available in two materials, either a Lycra or 3D mesh. The pack also features side compression straps and a single top strap. The shoulder straps provide decent comfort at 3 eighths of an inch thick and are 2.75 inches wide. They also have an adjustable sternum strap and daisy chains for attaching accessories. The hip belt itself is also 3 8 of an inch thick and features a daisy chain for accessories. Both the hip belt and the shoulder straps use a 3D mesh on the underside for durability. This gives them a little bit more cushion and a little bit more texture for grip. The base price of this pack is $399 and that's with no accessories added whatsoever, for which there are many. You can get things like a water bottle sleeve, pouches on your belt, pouches on your shoulder straps. There's a stick on key pouch you can get, a fanny pack that integrates into the backpack hip straps. You can also get side mesh pockets on the side of your backpack, as well as shock cord attachments for things like an ice axe or your trekking poles. For me, I decided that the only accessories I needed were two side hip belt pockets, one zippered shoulder pockets, and an integrated fanny pack that they refer to as the FUPA, front utility pack accessory. And that's where I put all of my camera equipment. So I just want to share some of my thoughts about the backpack. Uh, I think the first point I want to make is that this backpack is designed with section hikers, through hikers, and people who are light to ultralight backpackers in mind. It's got a max recommended capacity of 40 pounds, and honestly, if you want to carry it comfortably, I wouldn't exceed much over 30 pounds. So the second thing I want to talk about is the material it's made out of. This is Ultra 200. It is the brand new fad out that everybody is trying to make their backpacks out of now. It does seem to be more abrasion resistant than traditional DCF. Uh, I don't think it has been out long enough to really have any long-term reviews on it. So far, in my experience, it does seem like it actually takes abrasion better than the traditional DCF that my previous version was made out of. But really, only time will tell. This pack is also marketed as water resistant. As far as I can tell, the pack's pretty waterproof. It is seam taped on the inside, so that shouldn't let any water in. However, you never know when you've got a leak until you end up with water in your bag. So make sure you always use a pack liner just to be safe. So they've made a couple of changes in the ARC series that I do really think improves the pack overall. One of those things is the availability of both 3D mesh and Lycra on the back support panel and the front mesh pocket. In addition, they've moved on from the original carbon stays, which are not pre-bent and are round, to the thicker square carbon stays, which are pre-curved. In 2019 on the John Muir Trail, my backpack actually had a problem with the original struts poking through the cradle in which it was held. I don't think that's going to be a problem with these brand new square struts, which are actually thicker and the point on the end is broader, making it less likely to tear through the cradle. If you're a person who likes to carry a camelback or other type of water reservoir on the trail, this is probably not going to be your backpack. Z-Pax has elected to do away with the hydration port on its backpacks. I would say the biggest con to the Z-Pax backpacking world is the fact that you have to buy all your accessories separate on an already pretty expensive backpack. At a $400 base price, you can find yourself spending upwards of $500 to $600 if you want your backpack fully loaded. All in all, I think this backpack is a really solid choice for people who want an ultralight pack but also still want frame support and airflow. Well guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this post-trail review of the Z-Pax Arc Hall Ultra. If you like what we do, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when we make future content. Also, feel free to leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. You can also check us out on Instagram, support us on Patreon, and our new website will be coming out soon. Now get off your butts and go play outside.